this is another brief Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefing where the storm has a name. Today it's just me again, Lehman Crafton, line developer of Torg Eternity. Um, so today I wanted to go over an email that we got. And please do send us emails at torgdcd at gmail.com. We will read your email uh, for the video and or podcast, as well as answer any questions you have and such. So that is what today is going to be, as well as after the email, I will talk about a transformation of objects within the Stela bounded zones on Core Earth, so your Eilish zones and your Nile zones, Tharkold zones, etc. Um, how transformation of items work, um, not not storm night transformations. So, having said that, let's go to the email. The email is from Jeff, and it says, um, "I want to want to both ask you to discuss Core Earth more and." If you can somehow bend the ear of the line developer or someone of that ilk, well, let's see if you bend my ear. Uh, let the Torg folks know that I want Core Earth books. A lot of attention is paid to the various invading cosms in the game, but the Core Earth is a cosm too. And while it is our world in the near now, that concept is doing more heavy lifting than I think is reasonable. Cryptids are a thing. A possibility war is happening. Near now implies technology is more advanced. This raises all sorts of questions. What are the cryptids doing? Where do they come from? What are their stats? How are governments responding to the invasion? I have a hard time wrapping my head around what the war looks like between Core Earth and invading Cosms. So what does that look like in the various theaters of war? What do adventures in Core Earth look like? What does your one timeline for Core Earth look like? I have a combined timeline from each of the Cosm books, but it feels incomplete. So in short, more Core Earth, please. The invading Cosms are great, but Core Earth has a ton of potential too. Tell me more. So yes, I will tell you more. Plans are... At some point, not in the next Kickstarter, um, which will be a revisioning of the core rules in the Torg Eternity 1.5 uh, books, but very shortly afterwards, and what I mean by shortly afterwards is not necessarily in months for a new Kickstarter, but in how many uh, waves Kickstarters after that. So. Um, we want to do Core Earth. We want to do Core Earth very much. We want to add those 10 Cosm cards. Uh, we want to define the Delphi Council more. Right now, um, there's the beta primers, both for the GM and the players on Drive Through RPG, but they are not uh, physical books. So we want those uh, that information condensed into a Core Earth book. So... The Core Earth book would be somewhat similar to how the other source books are. They would list certain things of Core Earth. They would list the world laws. They would list um, axioms, of course, and stuff. And then instead of having the High Lord section and the Invader section, that's where we would have the Delphi Council uh, section and go over their structure and also show a kind of a, a template, if you would, of how storm knights and the delphi council react and what happens if storm knights go up in ranks within the delphi council so that's all something that i'm looking very forward uh, to getting into it's just we need to get through the the core mechanics of revised uh lo looking at that um cryptids that's your bigfoot's your chupacabras there's stuff like that They've just always been around. It's kind of like how on he here on real Earth, there's a lot of people that believe that they've always been around. So that's kind of how the cryptids work. So I can uh, say that. When you say near now implies technology is more advanced, near now just means it's near to now. So if there's some advancement in a month from now, then that advancement should be in your core Earth. If it's something that didn't advance up to now, probably 
Probably not. That's something that I did in my classic tour campaign, which went on for off off and on for the 25 or so years between the original tour release and the Torg uh, Eternity release. And every once in a while we realized that some of the stuff in those books was obsolete, especially when you looked at the old Nippon Tech book when they talked about these super advanced uh, like Nintendos that were 64-bit and these computers that had huge hard drives of like 52 megabytes and and stuff like that and i don't know the exact thing but i know that one we in core earth real core earth or real earth surpassed that it really made those books obsolete and why i really like the classic cyber papacy book because they used the term blocks which were just kind of hypothetical amount of fictional space that things took and that was really nice because it didn't become obsolete in that in that fashion so that's kind of what near now is when i was doing it we played really a, a lot in the uh, early to mid 90s and probably around 98 or so we took a hiatus we came back in the early 2000s and things had already changed drastically um the whole concept of buying and selling stuff on the internet we went from old maps in an actual book an atlas that one of my players bought a world atlas that we could look at um, to where you could go to Google Maps and, and things like that. So basically, as a game master, what I always did is I just went, how much is a computer? What's a computer is? Let's look online to see what those prices are and what a computer can actually do now, and we'll consider that near now. And then later, around the 2010, I kind of had another soft retcon where we just advanced uh, core earth technology to meet modern technology and then the last time i did it was right before toward eternity came out um in around 2017 early that year i had started a new tour game and that one got converted into uh, toward eternity because my players had only went on five acts or so so that was only 25 xp and we but before that started we did another retcon type thing to advance so in the character's mind they had only been doing stuff for a couple of years whereas in the real time it had been decades um so we will keep certain things like that in uh, accounted for um because i i don't want to do that those obsolete type things but I think it's also on the Game Master that, hey, it's near now. If you're wondering what the price of something is, that's something that we could buy. If I wanted to buy a 2024 uh, Ford Mustang, I could go online and see what it was, what, what the options are, and say, hey, it's going to cost your, your character this much, or your persuasion is going to be this much to streetwise, will be this much to see if you can find it and be able to buy it. Because unlike what would probably happen in a real situation where you have seven uh, invading realities crashing down on Earth that would completely destroy economy and stuff, Torg has a cinematic approach that is more kind of, say, like an alien's nation in that there's still economy in the non-invaded areas. And then other places, even like Cyber Papacy and uh, Tharkold, uh, in, in the Russian controlled parts of Tharkold, you will have stuff that still is, and, and definitely uh, Pan Pacifica will still have corporations and things uh, helping with economy and shipping and world trade, basically. So that's what I would say. You use the internet. It's a lot easier now to uh, put things on than it was 25 years ago. So hopefully that gave you some hope. Uh, the the uh, world law of hope for Core Earth, that yes, we will have a Core Earth book and some guidelines on what I personally do in my game. Um, even from 2017 to now in my Torg Eternity game, a, a certain amount of time has passed, but a lot more real time has passed. And as new inventions come, well, they were just always, always available. And now you can get it as a, a Storm Knight. Um, so, having said that, let's um, move on to the talking about transformations. 
I want to talk about transformations. So there was a question about transformations in Tharkold on the Piazza forum, uh, the piazza.org.uk. Um, it's prim primarily for uh, other game worlds within a, a popular game system, but they do have various other subforms for different games, and Torg is one of them. Whether it's original classic Torg or Torg Eternity, you can go there. I pop in now and then. I'm not a regular there, but I do pop in now and then, and I saw this topic, and I thought it would be good to go over, which was transformations. And from a lore, not necessarily a mechanic standpoint. But there is a page in the Torg Eternity rulebook that has a chart that lists out transformation for living and non-living items. And that's one thing you have to remember is depending, and it's also set out by pure zones, dominant zones, and mixed zones. So there's two things you need to keep keep kind of in your mind as a game master and or as a player, as a table, figuring out what rules work at your own table, is that it can be different depending on the situation. It's not just a clear-cut thing, and that's why we give rules for how it happens, like disconnecting, and then how you transform if you mishap on a reconnection roll or you lose a reality add. But a lot of it kind of leaves things up to the player, the game master, their table to determine how that transformation works. So I want to talk about the, the lore aspect of transformation because there's various types of transformation also. There are things which are kind of forced transformation, and we're talking about ords at this time, or I'm talking about ords. Forced transformation. So when a high lord connected to their darkness device invades a new cosm to steal possibility energy, they still have to expend some possibility energy to do so. They have to have the stalays there. They have to have the axiom wash, which is a reality going in forcefully and trying to transform everything to fit the reality that is invading. And that happens in pure zones. So in a pure zone, you will get a situation where the pure zone reality is extremely similar to the source reality, whether that's a cosm or the Gaunt Man kind of takes it with him with Hecaton, it depends on that. So when I say source, I can't actually define it because it's different for, for different High Lords. A lot of times it's their home cosm. Um, with Pan Pacifica, it's almost a collection of cosms attached to the home cosm. With the Gaunt Man, it goes with him. So there's various aspects. So when I say source, I mean the source of that reality. And while axioms are a part of the reality, they're not the entirety of the reality. That's where world laws, both major and minor, come in, as well as just cultural things and things that might be in a reality that wouldn't be in a different reality, even if the axioms are the same, concept-wise. So I'll get a little bit into the weeds, but the question was kind of, will things automatically transform, say, to Tech 25 in Tharkal? That was the original question. And that kind of opens up a thing of what part of Tharkal are you talking about? If you're talking about a pure zone, those pure zones are going to highly reflect the home cosm of the Tharkal do. But the blasted lands, that is a completely unbound, at least to start off with, was completely unbound area of mixed zone. Since the invasion started, Ratchin put a lot of stele and bound those to make bounded mixed zones. So you have unbounded mixed zones, you have bounded mixed zones, you have dominant zones, and you have pure zone. In a pure zone, every non-living thing will transform. Absolutely. Even if it's a car on the street, something will transform about it. It doesn't mean that that car will become a Tech 25 car. It just means something will become more Tharkholdy. 
Um, when you look at the mix zones, then you can have the car remain the same because it's 50-50 or almost 50-50 Earth Core Earth and Tharkold. So certain things will transform, certain things will not transform. And for Tharkold, also what is in the area. So when you're looking at the Mad Maxi type areas, then your cars might become like Mad Max or uh, the popular like A-Team where they just take a bunch of welding and slap iron armor and stuff on it. That type of thing will happen. When it's in Tharkold, you might get different corporation logos and names get associated. The cars might change to be a little bit stylistic and even they could function in Core Earth. They, and, and B-Tech 23, they still have a Tharkold bent because 100% in pure zone of non-living items transform. That's a forced transformation. The High Lord Darkness device are forcing their reality upon the population and people and items within that bounded stele. Then there are the Everlaw of One is looking out. And sometimes I will use anthropomorphic language. And I don't mean that Everlaw of One has a mind or a consciousness and it wants, but to say the Everlaw wants to do this or the Everlaw doesn't care about other realities. It just wants to eliminate one reality. That's kind of just language, hopefully to make it easier to understand. So the Everlaw of One, every once in a while, will check on contradictions. Something, somebody will try to do a contradiction and if they disconnect, that is saying the Everlaw of One saw you doing this contradictory thing and it disconnects you because it doesn't like it. And then if you transform, what's going to happen to you as a Storm Knight? The only thing that in the official Torg Eternity rules that happens is all contradictions are eliminated. So in every transformation, any contradiction will be eliminated. And if you can think of any kind of and, and again, change any rules that you want for your own table, but when I look at things generally, that's the one main law. The Everlaw of One, there is no po more powerful force out there. It will eliminate contradictions. The second thing to think about is that's not the end. It's not just a, it eliminates contradiction, that's the end. That's where the player, the game master, the table, they get to kind of decide how is this character, especially Storm Knights now we're talking about, how is this Storm Knight going to transform? If they have a prosthetic arm and they transform into cyber papacy, are they going to have a cybernetic arm? That one, I might say, you don't necessarily have it. Maybe you want to take the disability perk because the kind of mentality of the cyber papacy is that cyberware is holy and divine and they want you to become a cyber papist to profess and to to go for the cyber pope as being your direct contact through him to the divine they might require that. So it's not necessarily that that prosthetic arm becomes a cyber arm. Now in Tharkold, that could be different because Tharkold wants you to have that pain and that occult tech is going to be painful for you. So that might be something that your game master, your table says, okay, if we transform in cyber papacy, you don't automatically get it. We will have it transform, and that will be a perk that you'll need to buy in Tharkol because it fits the system. Or you can just say, eliminate all the contradictions and build your character from scratch. And we've talked about that. Uh, myself, Jay, Mark, others have talked about that transformation um, here on the Delphi Council, the briefings. But that is a Everlaw of One game mechanic thing happening in game. There's the Force. Also, through a reality storm that is invoked, an invoked reality storm. But then there is the passive, which kind of like the Everlaw of One on the disconnection and then the mishap on your reconnection. There is the reality storms that you get into a reality storm and you might transform. And that's a passive 
uh, transformation. Nobody, no conscious being is out there to do it. So that's what you do have a conscious being. If you have a high lord darkness device pushing that possibility energy to force a bounded stale area to transform to their reality, that's a forced transformation. It's like a huge major invoked reality storm you have invoked reality storm is one storm night goes over to another storm night and they try to disconnect and transform that other storm night that is their goal the passive ones are when you're doing contradictory things and the ever law of one just decides to cut you from your your source reality or you get into a reality storm and, and you end up something happening disconnecting failing to reconnect mishapping and etc so that's why when i get asked i can't necessarily give a clear-cut answer because you either have to be very specific or you get into the weeds like with this episode so having said that hopefully that kind of explains things it's not just something you can look at a chart that chart is good it will tell you what transforms and even if it transforms it can look very similar to what it was but it was a transformation it's the same as if you if if i talked a, a couple of one or two episodes ago about i would pick pan pacifica because it's closest to being core earth so if i transformed I could be very similar to this Lehman here, but I wouldn't be this Lehman here. There would be some things different, and it's not just going to be a change on my t-shirt. There is going to be intrinsic parts of me that are different, the way I think, the way that I speak, things like that, um, not just my glasses style. Um, I might have some bio genes that got on it because that version that and pacifica and pacifica version of lehman is not the same as the core earth so even though everything that i'm wearing and and having now is is tech 23 or low lower if i transform into pan pacifica i transform i am no longer core earth um my t-shirt might not change but in here, something will make me Pan Pacifica and not Core Earth. So hopefully that um, clarifies it. And it's something that then you get to explore as a table, as a game master, as a player, and you're not set down on hardcore rules. You can make the game fun for yourself by determining, okay, I've eliminated all my contradictions. Now, how do I do? Do I just keep everything that I have that wasn't con contradictory or do I change myself completely? So this Lehman could be very similar in Pan Pacifica or I may, might be completely gene modded um, out the wazoo because that's, that's what happened when I transformed. So that's where I like it because as a player, I get to explore those different things through transformation and I don't like losing ads in reality. So I'll usually transform and it's something that I consider it's fun. But if you don't, then you can keep your things mostly intact after you eliminate your contradiction. So now I'm basically saying the same thing over and over again. So I'll cut it um, short. So once again, please email us at torgdcd at gmail.com. And until next time, I hope you have fun in your own Cosmverse.